Hi, I'm Chris Ludlow. I'm an engineer with Meade Technology Corporation in Medford, Massachusetts. Uh, today we're going to weigh in on the Patriots deflate gate controversy and try to show uh, experimentally uh, how a football could lose pressure based on a, a change in temperature. Uh, so our experiment involves two NFL official footballs that have been placed in our calibrated environmental chamber. Uh, they've been soaking in this chamber for over 24 hours at 24 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 74 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's the temperature uh, that we assume that they were originally measured at by the NFL officials. Uh, we'll take them out, we'll do an infrared image of the football so you know that we're not cheating. Uh, we'll then take a pressure measurement, uh, show you that pressure measurement, put the footballs back into the chamber, lower the temperature down to the game time temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or about 10 degrees Celsius, uh, and then redo the tests and, and show you how, what, how the pressure changed. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. So here you'll see the infrared image of the two footballs. Uh, they should be at or near the chamber temperature of about 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. We actually have two different footballs. We set one to the high end of the NFL allowable range at around 13 and a half, 13.4 psi. So you can see this one is 13.4. Okay. This one here is where Tom Brady likes it at about 12 and a half. It's like maybe a little higher at about 12.6. So let's see how that goes for Tom. Let's close the door up. So now we've set the chamber to 10 degrees Celsius. You can hear the chamber kick on. It's going to start cooling down. Uh, we'll start the clock. And we'll let it sit here for about an hour and a half. We'll come back and check out and see how it did. So as, as you can see, uh, it's been uh, in about an hour and a half, the footballs have been in the thermal chamber. Um, so now we're going to again test the pressure of the footballs after they've been able, allowed to reach a, a thermal equilibrium or close to uh, at the 10 degrees uh, Celsius, which is about uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's open this up. So, sorry, so we're going to do the thermal image first so you guys can see that the footballs are indeed at the temperature they're supposed to be. Is that good? Do you want me to focus it or? All right. I'll do another one at the end because Dave isn't as good at working the camera as I am. Uh, but let's do a pressure reading now before these things warm up at all. Uh, so the first one, this was the one that was at the higher pressure to start. Uh, was initially started the test at 13 and change. It is now dropped to about 12.3 PSI. <clears throat> and this pressure of this football was originally about 12.6, which is where Tom Brady likes it, but now it has dropped about a full PSI to about, it looks like about 11 and a half PSI. Now I'm just going to take this out and put it back in to make sure uh, that the reading is again accurate. And again, that the, time that the taking the needle in and out doesn't impact the pressure reading much. You can see it is still reading the same pressure at 11 and a half PSI. Uh, so after doing the uh, uh, temperature test in the air, um, we also wanted to show that there are other factors that can influence uh, the pressure within a football. Uh, as Coach Belichick said, uh, the Patriots do a bit of a, a preparation to the footballs to kind of scuff them up and, and get them ready for the game. Uh, we wanted to show uh, that th those types of forces, those friction loads can add heat to the balls, which then also potentially influence the temperature of the air inside the ball, which as you've seen, would then influence the pressure in the ball. Uh, there's other factors as well, like moisture, water moisture, absorption from leather. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but there's lots and lots of factors. What seems like a simple engineering problem is often a lot more complicated than you think. But for now, what I'm going to do is scuff up this ball uh, and show you guys with a the thermal camera how that can influence the, uh, the, uh, the, the ball itself. Um, so I just realized I'm going to have to show you a before so you know that I'm not messing around. Uh, so here's an, an image of the football before. You can see, generally speaking, everything in the, in the frame is between 20 and 24 C, so pretty much at room temperature. The ball shows no substantial difference in temperature anywhere on its surface. Okay, so now we will come back. We'll scuff this ball up like the Patriots might to get it ready for a big game. You know, they might work it in pretty good. 
What's interesting is you also might see where my hand is gripping the ball because my body is also adding heat to this football as well. So we'll leave that there. And now what you'll see is there's now a hot spot in your image. And that hot spot is, you can see my hand on the ball, uh, where my hand was adding the thermal energy as well as the, the hot spot from the rubbing, which has brought the ball temperature up to about, looks like about 29 max. Uh, but obviously I, I could have worked it harder and gotten a higher temperature. So that shows how adding friction to the ball could also change the, the temperature of the air inside. And, um, and that's it. So thanks for watching.